So now that we have DHCP set up and running and scope created, let's take a look at some DHCP options. Now, before we dive into the DHCP tool, I just want to take a look real quick at the dashboard. And you'll see over here on the side we have our DHCP role, but you'll see that in Server Manager there actually isn't a lot of configuration or any configuration that we can do. It will show us any events related, any servers that are running DHCP, any events that are related to DHCP, but that's really about it inside Server Manager. Everything happens under our tools DHCP management. And then we go ahead and blow this thing up. Now, let's take a look at our server and scope options, and you're going to find them in a few different places. So I want to expand my DHCP and IPv4, and here is our scope, and you'll notice the scope is currently down. It's not that something is wrong with the scope, it's that I don't have that scope activated, and that's because this is actually connected to my... Uh, actual network and I'm using this as a demo so I don't want that scope activated now this is something we'll do sometimes we'll create a scope not activate it until it's needed to activate that scope we just have to right click on it and go to activate and then that immediately becomes an active scope and is serving DHCP addresses since I don't want that I'm gonna right click and deactivate again and yes okay if we right click on our server itself, we've got a couple of options here. The two most common ones, and it's going to be rare that we use these, but we can change bindings and unauthorized. Now, if you remember from our previous discussion about DHCP, when you're running DHCP on a Windows uh computer that's connected to a domain that has to be authorized to serve DHCP addresses in the domain. So if it's not authorized, it doesn't work. So at the moment, I have this authorized to serve addresses as part of our post configuration or post installation configuration. I can unauthorize that anytime I want to. And if you don't authorize it as part of your uh, in your config or post installation configuration. There we go. You can come back in here and reauthorize it at any time. We also have options to back up and restore. But one of the other things we'll deal with here is this add and remove bindings. <clears throat> so what this does is this defines for both IPv4 and IPv6 which interfaces, network interfaces, we want to bind to DHCP. In other words, what interfaces do we want DHCP to listen on? Now in this case I only have one, so I mean that's a very short list, but if I had a multi-homed computer or a multi-homed server, which remember that means it's got connections to more than one network, if I have a multi-homed uh, server, I might not want to serve DHCP on every single uh, interface that I'm connected to. I might only want to do it on one of them. So what I would do is I would uncheck the ones that I didn't want it to listen on check the ones that I do want it to listen on. That's what your bindings does. All right. Now we also have here another set of server options. Now notice this is outside of scope and separate from scope options. We've created the scope. We have specific options here. We also have server options here. Let's start by looking at scope options and we'll look at server options. So in my scope options, when I did my configuration for the scope, I defined a router, a DNS server, and a domain name. Now, these are pretty standard options to have. Right? Most of the time we're going to need a router because we want to get out of our network to the internet or to other networks that we're connected to. We need a DNS server to handle domain name resolution, and we typically define a domain name. So those are pretty standard options. There are a bunch of other options that we can add as well. So I'm going to right click on scope options and go to configure options. And here you'll see time offset, time server, name servers, log servers, cookie servers, LPR servers. There are a bunch. Now, these most of these are not included in the uh, standard uh, script when you go to create a new scope. And the reason is because they are very rarely used. So there are some of them that we will use occasionally, but most of the time they're not standard. They're not used all the time. And so we can come in and add them separately here if we want to, or if there is a specific need for it. So 
that's where we can set our scope options. We also have an advanced where we can do this by DHCP standard options, Microsoft options, Windows 2000, Windows 98. And we can kind of filter down the options a little bit that we want to be able to uh, work with. Okay. Now, server options here click on it and then right click configure options you're going to see the exact same thing all right what's the deal well here's the idea these options are specific to the scope if i have multiple scopes on the server let's say i have multiple scopes i'm serving multiple networks dhcp for multiple networks using either a multi-home server or using dhcp relay agents but you know, I've got four scopes, but all of them are going to use the same DNS servers. I can set that as server options rather than in scope options. And what happens is when we lease an address, we will lease an address from the scope with the available scope options and any server options. So let's say in my example here, I've got four scopes. I set a DNS server in my server options. Then I don't set any DNS servers in my scope options. Well, it pulls the DNS server from the server options there. And so they would all use the same DNS server. So that's the idea behind those server options. If we're in multiple scopes and we're going to have repeated information across all scopes, we can put it in server options rather than doing it in every scope under scope options. Okay. Now, <clears throat> that takes us through most of our server and scope options for DHCP. Where would we use these? Well, we're going to use them uh, for uh, Pixie boot configurations. We might set options for that. We might set options if we're using older boot P clients. We might use that if we're using an older Win server for some reason. We might use it for that. So there's different environments in which we will use some of these options, but they're not standard. They're not really common. The standard ones that we're going to use in most network environments are going to be the default gateway or the router, the DNS servers, and the domain name. Or, and the domain name. 